Oh boy, I hope I've got everything uh, that I'm gonna need for the collapse of everything because I tell you, it just feels like it's coming. Oh, oh, hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Come on in. Uh, perfect timing. I was actually just going over my list here that I've made. I've got 10 things that my wife and I are working double time on. We're trying to get this stuff done tonight if we can. Uh, this, is, this is critical stuff. This is critical times for preppers. Uh, I hope you already have a big stockpile of everything you need, but more than likely if you're watching this video, you don't, and you're, you're trying to find a way uh, to get in the, on the ground floor. I know every time a big major event happens, like uh, you know threats of World War III and uh, you know the Rona scare and all that other stuff that's going on, every time that happens, there's a whole new group of people, younger people usually, that are coming in. In, uh, and, and trying to seek out knowledge and what to stock up on. And I've made a list here. These are things that my wife and I are working on right now as a direct result of what is going on in our country uh, and in the world. I mean, this is, this is clearly part of the Great Reset. I believe this is all part of the Great Reset, Agenda 2030, uh, New World Order. So that's what they're trying to do is destroy and collapse everything so that they can build back better a new socialist system where you will own nothing and you will like it or you will be happy or whatever. And they're not saying that in a nice way like, oh yeah, you will own nothing and you're going to love this. It's going to be great. You'll see. No, they're saying it in a threatening way where if you don't agree with it, they're going to take you out behind the wall, behind the shed out there and take care of you the old fashioned way. So... We're in real trouble, guys. Uh, if you don't know, if you haven't noticed from my the trend on my channel here, uh, ever since the whole coronavirus came out, I switched over from doing a lot more of the repair and how-to and DIY videos to prepping and stocking up and things to be on the lookout for, uh, things that may be coming that would affect people that want to survive. And, and at the end of the day, we're all survivors. We all want to survive. The problem is, is most people don't have a survivalist mindset in this society that we live in. We live in a just-in-time delivery system where in three days, every store in the United States of America only has three days worth of food on the shelves. And especially if there's a catastrophic event. If you guys live in an area that gets hurricanes or tornadoes, let's say, or anything like that, weather related, or even in my area when a big ice storm is coming along or a big snowstorm, people will freak out and they will go to the store and buy everything out. Even if there's nothing else going on, they're just worried about getting locked in their house for several days. The stores will be picked over in many cases, especially if the media generates enough fear uh, before the storm comes. So if you're old enough that you've been to the store during these times of crisis like this, then you know how hard it can be to get things. And this is, this is why I want you guys to, to heed my advice here. Take this advice, write it down, whatever you want to do. But we're going to go over what I'm working on right now with my wife to avoid the collapse of everything because that's what's coming. Uh, and I really don't think there is any avoiding it. It's just how are we going to survive it? That's basically what I'm talking about. Number one on the list here, food. Obviously, you're going to want to eat. Uh, the human body is a machine. We require fuel. That fuel is food. Anything that can be stored long term, that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for stuff that has a short shelf life. I'm looking for long term shelf life items. I don't want things that I won't more than likely buy anything that has less than a six month to one year shelf life. Most of your canned uh, foods and things like that are going to be three to five years safe to eat, anything beyond that, depending on what it is, it may not be safe to eat. Some of them can go much longer than five years. So you're going to have to pay attention and do more research on individual things. Uh, but your canned foods is a great place to start for somebody that has nothing. I would advise canned meats, canned vegetables, canned fruits. I know they don't taste delicious. I know it's not the best thing. I know it's not, you know, a can of tuna fish is not as good of a, as a fresh piece of salmon. But when you're starving and your family is starving, it will taste like a fresh piece of salmon to you. So please guys, heed my advice, go out and do this. This is serious stuff. Dry goods is up next. You want uh, dried beans, dried rice. Uh, while brown rice actually has some more nutrients and things like that in it, the shelf life of brown rice is not nearly as long as white rice. So I would emphasize on white rice and get some brown rice just for protein and other, other nutrients that it has in it. Uh, that beans don't have, or uh, that, that white rice doesn't have in it. So uh, other dry goods you might consider is, and you definitely want to consider, is flour. 
uh, sugar. One of my commenters came in and said, look out, there's fixing to be a sugar shortage. I haven't gone and investigated that myself, but it, it sounds believable in this society we live in now, there's shortages of everything. So if I were you, I'd go stock up on sugar. Uh, salt is another one. Right now, we only use salt for you know, making our food taste better and things like that for seasoning. But what if you needed to suddenly use salt for preserving things, uh, preserving meats? That's going to require a lot of salt. So if you can find like a restaurant supply place or a um, Latter-day Saints place, LDS place around your area, you may be able to buy like 40 or 50 pound, 60 pound bags of salt. And that would be a great way to save some money and put a lot of salt away. Now, any of this kind of stuff you get, you're going to want to put them in dry containers. I like the big Rubbermaid type containers. And then usually I put the uh, uh, desiccant, desiccant, I can hardly ever say that word, but uh, you know, the things you get when you get like a new leather jacket or a new pair of shoes, there'll be that little uh, packet of basically desiccant and it dries out the moisture out of the air. And you can actually reuse those things. Uh, I don't remember what it was. Oh, a sandblaster, uh, the glass beads that I use for my sandblaster. Every time I open up a new bag of those glass beads, there's a huge bag of that desiccant stuff inside of there that's like probably a pound. So you can take that and put that in your oven at a low temperature uh, all day long and it will dry that stuff out and then it's brand new again. So you can use that. Uh, and I'm not saying put it in contact with your food, but like put it inside the Rubbermaid bin uh, all your dry beans and rice and then throw one of those bags of desiccant in there with it and that will keep the moisture and things like that out. In another video I talked about diatomaceous earth. Uh, a lot of people will take and they're, as they're putting up their dry beans and things like that and they will mix in diatomaceous earth because it is food grade safe. You are, it won't hurt you if you eat it, they say. Uh, so use your own discretion on that. If I was putting diatomaceous earth on my beans or on my rice or anything like that to keep bugs out, that's the whole point of it. Uh, I would rinse it off first before I used it. That's just my own personal view on that. Uh, some people say and claim it's perfectly healthy and it might even be good for you because the diatomaceous earth can actually kill a lot of the uh, worms and different things like that that you can get inside of your digestive tract. So a lot of people give that to their animals and such when they get worms and things like that. So different things that you want to know about. Uh, on that in that regard uh, cornmeal baking soda and baking powder and yeast uh, that, those are all big ones uh, you need to be able to bake your own bread there may be a point when bread is fifteen dollars or twenty dollars a loaf and you just can't you simply can't afford to buy bread anymore and if if that comes to be then you need to be able to take flour and sugar and salt and baking soda or powder whichever it is and yeast and make the bread I don't know. My wife makes the bread, to be honest with you, but that's something I should probably learn how to do in case something happened to her. That way I'll be able to maintain and, and, and continue on uh, if something happens to her. So these are all things that you want to think about. And I'm sure there's a whole bunch more uh, dried foods and canned foods that you're going to want to add in. Uh, luckily, luckily for us right now, this stuff hasn't caught up with the prices of gas and oil yet. So I advise you, go now. This may be your last chance to get this stuff, at least at relatively low prices. Everything's higher than it was before Biden took office, obviously, for obvious reasons. But it's not too late to go ahead and get in before it goes through the roof. I mean, right now, I just went to the store yesterday and I saw they had like the one or two pound bags of dried beans for like $1.99. So I would be stacking that stuff to the ceiling if I were you. That's what my wife and I are going to do. Number two, water supply. And I thought about putting water supply as number one because technically water is the most important thing uh, to sustain human life. Uh, and, you, and it just has so many uses. Not only is it great for drinking, it's also great for you know flushing toilets. Uh, so let's say you have a grid down situation uh, and no more power and the toilets, you know, the water pump's not pumping water to your toilet. You can actually pour water into the bowl of the toilet and still continue to use your septic system or your plumbing in your house there. Uh, so I'm, I'm out in the country, so I have a well and I have a septic system. But if you're in the city, it may be a little bit different. But the, the plumbing out of the house will still work, even if the incoming lines, the water supply in, is turned off. So if you have buckets of water around, and that could be rainwater that you caught off your roof. Uh, things to think about, guys. Uh, you don't want to be pouring your drinking water down the toilet to flush the toilet. But let's say it's been a week and you've been off grid and you've got some water that you and your wife have been doing bucket baths in. That would be a perfect uh, 
supply of water to pour down the back of that toilet so that you're not wasting your drinking water. You're going to have to think very smart about your water usage and how you're going to get water. One of the things that I'm weak on right now and I need to work on, I have a well, I have a generator, but I don't have the connection, the cord that I'm going to need, and it's a special cord. So I'm going to have to go spend 75 bucks probably to buy this special cord or make this special cord so that I can hook this straight up to my well house. And then in the event of a grid down, I can go out there and for short periods, I'll be able to run my well. Now, ideally, I'd have another big tank or a big 55-gallon drum or a 275-gallon IBC tote that when I'm running my well, I could just fill that up and then draw off of that. So I'm not having to start the well all the time. I could use that like a cistern tank. So these are things you need to think about, in my opinion, if you want to survive what's coming. Uh, you could also store water above ground simply by bottling up tap water and things like that. And I mentioned rain catchment. Uh, that's something if you've got gutters on your house, even if you don't have gutters on your house, if you have a valley in your roof where it makes a V and there's a place where water always shoots off right there, you could put a 55 gallon bucket or a drum directly underneath that and catch that water. Now you will have to clean that water and, and uh, boil it and, you know, filter it and things like that before you consume it for drinking water, but for flushing toilets, for taking a bucket bath, for, you know, giving your dog some water, giving your chicken some water, they can handle stuff that, that humans can't ha handle. So these are things to think about and I highly advise you, containers is gonna be one of the big things that people just forgot to get. Containers, remember that. When you go to the store, containers, 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 all of them. You want all containers. You want big ones for putting your dry, dry food and stuff like that in. You want five gallon buckets for taking bucket baths and other things like that. One of the things my wife and I like, I'll grab it right quick. Uh, this is actually an old one that I've just, I've got old wood pieces in it right now. This is just something else. Uh, but this is an old one that my wife and I had. Uh, this is a great size little container for dealing with bucket baths. Uh, it's harder to do it in a five gallon bucket. This is a little easier. You can, you know, get some warm water in there and it's not so bad and you can rinse off. And usually, believe it or not, that's about the right amount of water. A, you know, a couple of gallons, something like that. You can get yourself clean. Well, relatively clean not as clean as you're going to feel coming out of a hot shower so something to think about you know i mean again and that's one of those things if i can get my well hooked up to the generator it won't feel great but i could go in there and take cold showers while the gener generator is running or while my pressure tank actually has water pressure in it so if you don't know water wells almost all of them that i've ever seen have an above ground pressure tank they're usually blue I guess it's just because it's water and they have an air bladder inside of there that's usually pumped up to like 30 psi or something like that let's say well as your well is pushing up that water it actually charges up a pressurized amount of water so after the power goes off your well will actually run for you know several minutes before it runs out of water pressure so keep that in mind uh, these, these are things to think about that if you know the power is fixing to go off or you know that uh, the power just went off and you have a well then at very least you can go and capture that last bit of pressure into jugs and things like that, into containers. Uh, I drink soda pop like a fish. I know I shouldn't, but as a result of that is I save all the old two liter bottles, not all of them, but I save a lot of the old two liter bottles and I rinse them out, sanitize them, and then I put fresh drinking water in those and I store them in different places in my house, uh, under underneath beds and closets and things like that out of the way in case something happened we'd have drinking water, we'd have water to clean up with. It's just so vital. Water is the, the base ingredient in almost every degreaser. So if you're gonna clean dishes, you're gonna clean anything greasy or grimy, you're gonna need water. So number three, guns, lots of guns, ammo, lots of ammo. Uh, personally, I'm already pretty well set up on my gun supply. What I need more is ammo, uh, lots more ammo. And of course, it's very hard to come by right now. Uh, anytime I see it, if, it's a, if I can afford it, I'm snapping it up. And I, and I say all of this with that caveat. If you can afford this, do this. I'm not saying go broke uh, to do this, but as you can do this, stock up on all these things. I realize it's not gonna all happen at once. Uh, personally, I need to work on my reloading setup. I've got a press and I've got some of the things. I've actually got an old uh, Lee hand press where I can do nine millimeters in an emergency, but they're all 
by hand. No, there's no press to it. It's just a hand thing, and, and I don't really like it. I'd rather have a bullet press, and I do have a press, but I don't have all the dies that I need and all of the other accoutrements. You need a lot of different stuff. You need primers. You need uh, a way to clean your brass. I do have that. I've got a tumbler down there so I can clean my brass, uh, but you need to be able to get the old primers out. You need to be able to put the new primers in. You need to be able to reshape and resize the cases sometimes. I mean, there's just a lot to it. You got to have the powder. You got to have the actual projectiles to put in there. So these are all things that as I see them, uh, and I'll probably have to order a lot of that stuff offline. Uh, but as, as I see that, I'm going to be stocking up on that as I can afford it. Number four, obviously, oil products. I mean, you've seen it. Every state in the union right now has got ridiculously high gas prices. Uh, so as that happens, guess what? All other oil products are going to go up as a result of that. And unfortunately for us, damn near everything's made out of oil. So <laughs> get ready, guys. I mean, this is going to be a roller coaster ride that we've got going on, except for the problem is, is everything's just going this way, just going this way, just going this way. And then eventually the collapse happens and then all hell's going to break loose. At least that's what I'm worried is going to happen because I've already seen uh, people in, in, especially in California and places where it's already $7 a gallon. People are stealing gas, guys. And when gas gets to a certain point, you're going to have to probably go out and put a lock on your gas cap on your car or your truck because, you know, like my Suburban, it holds like 42 gallons of gasoline. And luckily for me, I gassed the damn beast up right before everything skyrocketed. So I'm not going to be driving that truck very much, but I may have to consider putting a locking gas cap on there because some, you know, some person that's more desperate than I am could come up and actually siphon that gas out. And I, you know, in the middle of the night, I wouldn't know anything about it. Even though my truck has an alarm on it, it probably wouldn't go off if the gas uh, door was open. So these are things you need to consider, guys. Maybe even if you've got a garage and garage space, maybe even just start parking your car inside, things like that. Because gasoline, as you know, again, I filled the truck up a few days ago. It already had like a quarter of a tank and I stopped the pump at $90 because I was just like, I couldn't stand to see it roll over to a hundred. Uh, and it does. That's usually what happens. Usually with this, with the prices like this, it costs me over a hundred dollars to fill up that Suburban when it's, when it's low on gas. So, uh, it's disheartening for sure. Every time I go to the pump now, I'm just getting depressed watching my money disappear. Uh, this is Biden inflation. So, uh, oil products, you're going to want to stock up on gas, diesel, if you've got anything that runs on diesel. Even if you don't, you might want to consider buying some for trading and bartering options. But certainly, uh, take care of the things you have first. So if you have lawnmowers, you have generators, you have vehicles that are going to be running off gasoline, motorcycles maybe, uh, those are things you're going to want to fill up to the brim and go out and get a whole bunch of gas cans and fill those up to the brim. I know it's going to be super expensive, but my opinion is gas is going to continue to go up. I think it's going to hit $10 a gallon. I really do. I'm afraid it's going to hit $10 a gallon and it's going to shut down the American machine when that happens. So hang on guys, we're in for a really bumpy ride. Other things you might think about that are oil related would be like motor oil. Uh, for me, I change my own motor oil and stuff like that. And I, I recommend you do that too, because you'll be able to save money on that and you'll know a job was, was done properly. But anyways, if you do that sort of stuff, stock up on these supplies, motor oil, transmission fluid, brake fluid, um, antifreeze, all of these things are going to skyrocket because of this oil going up like this. So, and that's for all vehicles and keep all of your tanks full because it hurts you a lot less when you only have to buy a quarter of a tank of gas at a time rather than a full tank. So uh, just do that for your own sanity so that you don't get so depressed when you go to the gas pump. I mean, I know it's freaking depressing, trust me. I'm looking at my Suburban going, oh man, can I afford to keep that thing? It's just, and would anybody buy it with gas prices going the way they're going? Number five, you're gonna want prepper, survival, off-grid, and DIY handyman type books. And you're going to want a lot of them. Uh, go out and research. I've done a couple of videos on some of the books that I have. If you're interested in that, we can delve deeper into my prepper library and go over a lot of these other books that I just think are, these are critical books that you need to have. Uh, again, the grid could go down. There's been all this talk of the, go look it up, poly cyber, uh, cyber polygon, they called it. Uh, it was all related to uh, the WEF and uh, what's his name, Klaus Schwab. They were talking about something could come along, 
much worse than the coronavirus in the form of a cyber attack and it would be like worldwide it would take our power down our internet down all this stuff so if that happens you should probably have a library of essential books that are going to help you be a better survivor you know if if everything's down if the grid's down if, if it truly is the collapse of everything and let's say you get a water leak on one of your lines or something that you you, you know you can't afford or more than likely a plumber is not going to come because he's going to be at home taking care of his own family. So you're going to need books on that sort of stuff. Maybe you have a minor electrical problem. You need to be able to fix that stuff yourself, uh, especially as it relates to running your off-grid power station, your generator, your solar, whatever you may have. Uh, those are things that certainly you want to have books on those things. Number six, uh, food and water for all pets and livestock that you have. And that's for us, we have a dog and two cats and seven chickens. So I need to be able to feed all those things. Uh, otherwise, those chickens are going to quit producing eggs and my dog is going to starve to death and my cats are going to starve to death. So uh, we don't want to see that happen. Uh, obviously, we love these animals. We want them to stay in our family and we want the, the chickens to keep providing us nutrients in the form of eggs every day. And to pull that off, uh, we're going to need to have have all the food and supplies and other accoutrements that you need you know like with chickens uh, we have the feed we have the uh, grit that goes into the feed so that they can digest the feed uh, we have the uh, the scratch now they could probably live without the scratch the scratch i give them as a treat or just to make them go where i want them to go that sort of thing but they could probably live without that but while I can get it relatively cheap, I'm gonna go ahead and stock up on that sort of stuff. What if I ran out of food and I only had a few days worth of scratch left, but I could keep them going for a few more days just on the scratch. So if you don't know, the scratch is just like little corn pieces and things like that, little seeds and things like that. It's like a fancy uh, bird feed for chickens or bird seed type thing for chickens. And it, and it really makes them happy. They love that stuff. Uh, number seven. This is something I'm going to really need to work on is a small solar power setup for running lights and charging devices. I already have the solar panels. I bought the 100 watt kit from Harbor Freight. Uh, it's a pretty good little kit. I built a little frame for it. We'll probably do a follow up video in the future on that. I've got one trolling motor battery, like a deep cycle battery, they call it. I know it's not the best for solar applications, but it's it's what I've got and it has a lot of amp hours. You know, it lasts a long time. so and my 100 watt panel can charge it up pretty pretty quickly so about you know maybe five six hours of sun it'll be fully charged and then i can operate off that in the evening uh, but i need to buy like backup stuff like a backup inverter uh, more power cords just so i can run the thing around i don't have anything set up permanently so uh, if the power grid goes down i set my solar up and then i run a wire into the house and that wire will you know from the solar panels will charge up the battery uh, through the charge controller and then I will use the inverter on the battery directly connected to the battery But I also need to get fuses and things like that just to make it safer uh, But it's worked. I've used that system in the past in our off-grid place out in the Rocky Mountains and it works great We could you know charge our cell phones uh, Although if the grid's going down and it's not coming back on you won't be charging your cell phone But uh, we have a small little DVD player that we can plug into that it's just a little handheld thing but it plays a dvd and it's got a little screen on it so we could sit there and watch movies if we want some entertainment things like that uh charging up uh chart rechargeable devices like flashlights things like that that you may be using uh in a survival situation it'll be a blessing to have that not to mention lights that's the main reason that we have the solar uh backup system is for running lighting so let's say something happens and it's dark and you need to be able to do like some sort of, you know, maybe a splinter removal or something like that. Maybe you get a really nasty metal splinter in your finger and you need lights for that. And flashlights probably aren't going to cut it. So it's better just to be able to light things up uh, for reading, for doing field surgery, for doing anything like that that's delicate. And as you can see, I have to wear glasses now because I'm of that age where uh, my, my near vision is not very good anymore. So I need the light. Uh, it's the only way I can see to do things like gun cleaning or anything else, you know, reloading, anything else like that that's a delicate process that you need to be able to see very good, you're going to want lights, obviously. So uh, having a cheap, standalone uh, solar system that you can run 
lights and basically small stuff. You're not going to run your fridge on this system that I'm talking about, but you can run small things and trust me, it's so much more civilized when you can turn on real lights and it's just great. You can run like on my system, I could probably run eight to 10 of those LED bulbs because they draw so little power. So you could really light it up with not a whole lot of money. Something you probably ought to think about. Number eight, uh, garden preparation. And that's what I was actually doing today when I thought about this video. And one of the things I would recommend is getting, your, getting yourself a spot uh, set up right now, cleaned up, getting your soil amended, all of that stuff's going up. Uh, Russia is a huge supplier of the fertilizer in the world. So a lot of the things that we had last year are going to be a lot more expensive because fertilizer is going to be a lot more expensive. Uh, these are things that you need to do right now. Buy heirloom seeds. Uh, and we're going to personally take our gardening a lot more seriously this year than we ever have before. Uh, we're going to have to really be smart about how we plan it out. Usually my wife and I, we typically do like to make just kind of a salsa garden type thing is what we do in the past. But this year, we're going to have to be able to uh, think about this long term and think about actually, you know, putting food in the refrigerator and in cans and different things like that so that we'll be able to survive next winter. And you're going to want to save some seeds off of that stuff, too. That's the whole point of the heirlooms is that uh, with heirloom seeds, you can take those seeds that you harvest and they'll be they'll be viable next year if you know how to you know store those the proper way number nine canning supplies and books on canning and food preservation i mean i know it's not just canning you've got dehydrators uh we've got one of those uh just there's lots of different ways vacuum sealing things and different things like that there's lots of different ways to to store food that are going to help it last a lot longer and things like that but canning uh goes back to our grandparents and our forefathers. Uh, that's how they did it, and it kept them alive, but you need to know how to do it safely. So I recommend getting all the supplies you're gonna need and the books on canning that you're gonna need to do it safely, because the last thing you wanna get is like botulism or something like that, uh, some bad disease, or get sick, or get you know dysentery or something from some of the food that you've canned up. You wanna do it safely uh, so that nobody in your family or anybody you trade with gets sick. Number 10, extra clothing. Uh, such a, and heavy duty stuff. You're not going to want any of this stuff that's fancy and frilly and for made for looking good. You're going to want functional, utilitarian type clothing. Uh, strong, tough jeans, tough pants, whatever you, you know, whatever you prefer. Work boots, those kinds of things. You're going to be doing a lot more of that kind of stuff. Digging in the soil, working out in the yard, working out in the garden. In the middle of the summer, in my state, you can't be inside the house if the air conditioner is not on. So you may be spending all your time out under the shade tree uh, just trying not to you know, die of heat stroke or whatever if it's 106, 110 degrees or whatever. So these are things you, you really need to consider. Uh, tough jeans, pants, boots, extra socks, undies, shirts, winter and summer gear. These are all things that right now they're still relatively affordable. So I recommend going out, using sales, using, you know, go to Walmart, do whatever you can. Buy extra packages of socks and underwear and don't even open them up. Just keep them in a drawer somewhere to where when you start wearing holes in your socks because you're working so much harder than you are right now, then you'll have a new, a new package to pull out of the drawer and throw into rotation. Uh, ways to wash your clothes and things like that off grid. You're going to need, you know, there's different systems to go with. You can get a bucket, a couple of buckets and like a plunger and basically do it that way uh, by hand. There was the old washboard method that our forefathers used. Uh, you could actually, and I've actually toyed with this idea myself, is that uh, some of these older washing machines, uh, can't, I don't really know what to call this type. It's just basically like a big tub and the, there's no lid on it, but they're old timey. It's like the first washing machines they had uh, that were electric washers, not the ones that ran off the old uh, thumper engine, but the ones that are electric washers, like an old Maytag or something, and it has an actual ringer on top. If I could find a use one of those that still works good, that would be an excellent thing to have just sitting in the corner of my shop somewhere because... A system like that, I could run off of a generator, uh, you know, run my generator for a short time and then wash a load of clothes in that thing, wring them out, hang them on the line. Uh, if you don't have a clothesline, that's something else. Uh, the ultimate off-grid uh, dryer is a clothesline. 
Uh, personally, I prefer my clothes to be, especially like towels and things like that. I love it. I love a towel that's been dried on the line. It just feels so good to me. I love that. It's way better than those soft ones. So guys, these are things just to get you going. Hopefully you already have a lot of this stuff. Uh, if there's anything in the comments that you want to tell me about that maybe I left out here that you think are critical, uh, that we, we need to buy right now because they're definitely going to go up in price because of all the shenanigans that are going on coming out of the Biden administration, then please let us know down in the comments. We love reading them. Uh, things ain't looking good, guys. That's the nicest way I can say it. Uh, go watch some of my other videos if you want to know why things aren't looking good. Uh, but this is not done by accident. This is being done intentionally by design. The NWO is coming. The Great Reset is coming. They're coming for everything that you and I hold dear. Hang in there, guys. I stand for liberty. I hope you do too. Please, please, please heed my warning. Go stock up now.